的解决方案团队 Clean Power Solution， 呃的智能环保电网系统，有请。<咳>呃，你好，我的我的英国姓是 Mark Sandon 两个，对不起，我的中文是不好。At least thirty percent of all renewable energy is totally wasted. It's produced at the wrong time, in the wrong amount, and in the wrong location. The problem is that no one knows how much power. Used, or when, or where. Therefore, if it's not used immediately, it has to be sent to the local grid, the local power network. And this causes problems for the local grid network. And so, in China, permission to connect to that local grid network is often refused or delayed. Our patented system allows all of the power that is produced to be stored. And used when it's needed, instead of only when it's being produced. This also means that it can be connected to the local grid as well if extra power is required. Our system enables a business to create all of the power it needs and still be connected to the local grid network in case they need that little extra bit, whilst being able. To export in a very controlled manner any excess power. In addition, an added benefit, and an addition to our system, is that there, there is a sufficient amount of excess renewable energy. It can be converted into hydrogen, and the hydrogen can be used as heating or vehicle fuel. This obviously has a reduction in fuel costs and reduces pollution. Which in China is extremely important. In China, it's considered that by 2020, 50% of all vehicles sold in China will either be electric or hydrogen powered, and our system offers a solution to both of those problems. We've patented a method of storing the electrical power within a synthetic, smart microgrid. That can work in parallel with the local network, and can do this while supplying power to the site and having the ability to demand extra power if needed from the local grid. Any excess power can be exported or converted into hydrogen for use as vehicle or heating fuel, with the obvious concomitant major effects on the energy costs of the company and be extremely profitable. No other system on the market can. Perform this function as a completely self-contained system. What you can see there is an example of our test site in England, where we have a 20 kilowatt wind turbine, and at the top we have the industrial units with 50 kilowatts of solar panels. All of the power goes to provide, also all of the generated power goes to fulfil site needs, both for the industrial unit and the farmhouse. And the local hotel. Any extra power is stored in the battery, and if not enough power is being produced from the renewables, then the extra requirements are demanded from the batteries. Any excess power not needed can be converted into hydrogen, and that hydrogen can then be used as central heating fuel or as vehicle. Any diesel vehicle can be converted to run on hydrogen, and all electric vehicles with hydrogen range extenders can also work on hydrogen. The market for renewable energy in China is huge and currently untapped. This is because of the problems, or one of the problems, of connecting to the national state power system. If companies in China were free, allowed and permitted to create And store their own electricity, it would enable more power to be made available to domestic properties and other companies that don't have our system. This would lead to an accompanying reduction in the need for new power stations, thereby helping China and reducing pollution. 
The total demand for electricity in China is approximately 2,584 kilowatt hours per person, but only 216 kilowatt hours of that is used for domestic consumption. The rest all goes for industrial use. In addition, China imports approximately 10 million barrels of oil per day at a current cost of $50 per barrel. Now, if just 0.1% of this could be supplied by hydrogen, which had been made from free excess electricity, the value would be at least in excess of $5 million per day, along with a significant reduction in pollution and the health benefits to the population. There are other companies out there that already do store power in batteries and then allow that power to be used on site. That is a very simple off-grid supply system. It's not, it's not a problem at all. The problem is, though, that if there's too much power being generated or not enough power being generated, there's no way of handling that problem except with our storage and grid connection system and it could solve a major problem for China. Now it is possible, as I mentioned, to control the export using export restriction devices. However, all that does is simply dumps the power and wastes it. And that's not in anyone's intentions. The only other option to solve the problem is to have a standby generator. And the standby generator obviously is there to supply power at times of high demand, low renewable production, or power cuts. The problem is, though, that obviously that needs a diesel generator just to sit there on standby, doing nothing most of the time. It increases the capital costs and the running costs, and it increases pollution, as well as increasing oil imports into China. Our IP is protected. Our IP is protected by international patent and copyright protection. Our product is ready to come to market and requires no further development apart from alignment with current Chinese regulations. And this year, we've already won the Smart Energy Award from the Renewable Energy Association. Our system won the Green Farmer of the Year Award from the Northern Farmer Magazines. And last year, we were finalists for the Eco Award from Eco Connect. We are currently looking for cooperation from Chinese companies to develop the business and install the systems throughout China and increase sales to the Middle East, sorry, to the Southeast. Our team is made up. Sorry, our team is made up of myself, Dr. Mark Stanton. I'm the joint founder of the company and commercial development director. Mr. Mike Huff, my fellow finding founding partner, who is our managing director. Simon Harrington, an extremely qualified and talented administration director, and Andrew Chappell, our engineering director, has years of experience both in electrical and hydrogen industries. So, thank you so much for inviting me to speak to you today. Thank you so much more for listening to me, and I look forward to here answering your questions. Cheers, Thank you.这个新能源发电的但是它这个发电的不稳定的哈就是比如说我们太阳能发电现在很多的这个企业存在这个问题发电电就是说虽然发出来了但是呢就是不符合我们这个电力公司这个电网并网的需求导致了这个大量的发出
And if you just start putting power into the national grid system or the national power system, they don't know what it is. Is it the right frequency? Is it the right power? Is it clean? Does it have voltage problems? Does it have frequency harmonics? Does it have phase imbalances? Our system, yes, solves all of those problems. Because we store the power first of all, a bit like a sort of a lake of electricity, we can then ease it if we need to. Really, we don't want to send anything to the grid. We want to keep it all ourselves. We're very greedy. It's ours. We want to keep it. But if we have to give it away or sell it, even better, then we want to sell a very pure product. So when it leaves, when it is exported, it has exactly the right harmonics, it has exactly the right voltage, it has exactly the right phase imbalances, it does not cause reactive power problems. The idea is to solve your problems, not add to them. Now, that's what, if our power is accepted, once the power is generated, it goes into our system, it's then very clean and then will not cause a problem. Hello,我想问一下,就是咱们这个项目是通过什么呢? Um, we use uh, various types of technology. Uh, sorry, the question was for the English people. I didn't hear that. The question, if I understand it correctly, was what type of technologies are we using to make sure the power is completely clean? The power comes from uh, solar panels or from small wind turbines. That power is DC power, which is inverted through bidirectional inverters into restored and fed to the, site, the feed site demand at the same time. Um, we use ABB inverters, we use Victron inverters, we use our own type of inverters. It depends um, what the power requirements are of the site are as to the battery technologies. Different batteries have different um, abilities. For instance, if the site demand was a, a, a nice steady power demand, let's say 100 kilowatts, 50 kilowatts, or 10 kilowatts, then we might use salt batteries because they have a C rating of 0.1 and so they can deliver a nice slow power supply. However, if we knew the power supply was going to be varied, whereas it may go up and down at various times, we'd use maybe nickel cadmium batteries or we might use lithium titanate or lithium ion batteries. We have looked at lithium phosphate and we probably don't think they're really quite good enough yet. So battery technology um, is still various and it's, it's ongoing. As new battery technologies come on, we'll, we'll examine them and possibly choose them. What, the way we can then do it, because we've then stored the power, we can then use it with bidirectional inverters, we can make sure there are no phase imbalances, there are no reactive power problems, and the voltage regulation is safe. And by the inverters, we can then feed out a very pure supply surface, uh, signal. In the UK, there is a requirement that's called G83, which means that if you export less than 16 amps per phase, then you don't have to ask permission to connect to the grid. And if we can comply with those conditions in England or in the UK, yeah, we can, we can certainly supply, comply with your conditions. Thank you.